Hello everyone, so we are back again for another research lesson. In this video, I will try to discuss to you the topic about categorical and continuous variables. try to discuss to you the topic about categorical and continuous variables. If you remembered, I discussed last time in our previous video the topic about independent and dependent variable. So in this video, we will try to answer the questions like number one, what are categorical variables? What are, exam what are some examples of categorical variables? Number three, what are continuous variables and what are some examples of continuous variables mind you guys that uh, you need to learn this type of variables because you will deal with these variables later on when you do your data analysis in the chapter 4 of your research so hopefully uh, you will try to complete uh, listening to this video so that you will learn more about this new types or kinds of variables okay so we will start with uh, the first and the second question what are categorical variables and what are some examples of categorical variables so we have here first categorical variables so it is termed categorical variables because it has categories Sometimes categor categorical variables are called as discrete variables because it has no specific numerical value. That's why it is discrete. And it is sometimes called also as qualitative or qualitative variable because um, it is expressed in words and it has no numerical value. So that's categorical variables. And your categorical variables has two classifications. We have the nominal variable and then the number two we have the ordinal variable so listen attentively as i discuss to you the difference between the nominal and ordinal variable what is uh, an example of categorical variables so we have here first nominal variable so nominal variable is a type of categorical variable because it has categories just like other variables and it is termed nominal because it means name or label. You are naming something, you are labeling something. And for nominal variables, we have at least two or more categories. So I will provide examples later so that you will know, uh, you will understand how nominal variables are, are being categorized or what are some examples of nominal variables and their categories. So usually, in nominal variable, you are only naming the categories, you are only labeling the categories, and there is no such order or rank, meaning to say there, there is no first, second, third, fourth, fifth. There is no rank, there is no order. You are just naming or labeling them. So we have here example of a nominal variable. We have here type of school. Okay, type of school. So type of school can be categorized into two. We have public or private so in this case you are just naming the type of school into two categories it's either public or private and it has no numerical value that is why it is categorical and uh, there is no order we cannot say that public is is ranked one and private is ranked two or private schools is ranked are ranked one and public schools are ranked number two so there is no order you are just naming that there are two types of school we have public or private the second example of nominal variable is religion so religion so religion is a nominal variable here and and the examples of categories uh, we have here christianity buddhism hinduism or if you would like to add more that's that's okay because as mentioned in the definition the nominal variable composed of is composed of two or more categories so we have here religion has three categories and uh, there is no rank here we are not ranking Christianity as first Buddhism as second or Hinduism as third so no rank or order is being 
um, noted here. That is why religion is considered as a nominal variable. Okay? So, another one, another example. We have here the civil status. So, civil status can be uh, classified into the following. We have single, married, widowed, or separated. And civil status here is a nominal variable because it has no rank, no order. We are just naming or classifying here um, the, the, the civil status. Okay? And another example for nominal variable, we have here the eye color. Okay? Eye color is classified here as brown, black, and then blue. And it is not ranked here. It is not uh, ordered. That is why eye color here is considered as a nominal variable. Okay, so that's it. And uh, the second type of categorical variable is the ordinal variable. So ordinal. Ordinal variable is also a type or an example of a categorical variable because it has categories. So the categories can, can be two or more as well, just like the nominal variable. However, um, the categories for, for this uh, variable has rank or order so that's the difference between ordinal and nominal for ordinal it has you are naming or labeling the the categories of the variable but you should observe ranking or order while for nominal you are just naming you are just labeling but there is no order or rank so we have here examples of ordinal variables number one we have educational level Okay, for the educational level, uh, you can rank the, the level attained by a certain person as elementary, high school, or college. And if you can see, there, there is an order. Uh, elementary, okay, the first rank, the second rank is high school, and the third rank is college. So if you are not familiar with, with how uh, variables are being ordered, so you must see to it that... Uh, when you identify your variable, you are aware that uh, if it could be ranked or if it could be ordered or not. Because that's the, the, the point wherein you will identify if that variable is nominal or ordinal. Okay? So that's for educational level. And another example for ordinal variable, we have here the customer satisfaction. So, uh, customer satisfaction here as a variable would refer to the satisfaction, the level of satisfaction of customers as to the services being rendered, uh, for instance, by a certain uh, a business. Okay? And it could be, the, categor the categories could be the following. We have very low, low, high, and very high. So, if, if you... Uh, analyze the categories for the variable customer satisfaction it comes from from the, the very low ranking or order to, to very high so you can see that there is a rank and there is order and so we can say that this is not a nominal variable but an ordinal variable another example is a preparedness level for instance, preparedness level of students for college, okay? So, uh, for instance, the categories that uh, you included for this variable are the following. We have not prepared, somewhat prepared, prepared, and then very prepared. So, you are naming the, the level lab, or labeling the level of preparedness of the students here but you are observing certain order or rank from low to high okay from low preparedness or not prepared i mean you are i mean you are observing order here or rank when it comes to the preparedness level of um, the students uh, from uh, not prepared to very prepared okay so remember that in ordinal, in ordinal variable, uh, there is rank or order being observed. And uh, additional information, sometimes um, an, our nominal uh, variable has at least, has 
only two categories or lev levels and we call this as dichotomous variable so dichotomous variable is also a nominal variable but it has two categories only or it has two levels only okay from the word die which means two for example we have here an example of a dichotomous variable which is also a nominal variable we have here gender okay gender has two categories or levels only we have the male and female and that makes gender as a dichotomous variable okay you have only two categories for that another one another example for dichotomous variable we have internet availability internet availability is your variable and we have here categories we have two categories available and not available so in here we have only two categories and that makes this nominal variable as a dichotomous variable to be specific if you will add one more uh, categories for this so it will no longer be considered as a dichotomous variable okay so that's it for categorical variables and this time we will proceed to the continuous variables okay from the term continuous meaning uh, the the measurement here is uh, continuous it is endless okay this is a variable that is something that you measure um, that the measurement is endless and it is usually quantitative so when we say quantitative it is a type of a variable wherein it now involves numerical value so we are not using anymore here words or terms unlike in the categorical variable okay so take note of that so continuous variables has two okay okay continuous variable has two um examples or classifications we have the interval and then the ratio so first we will talk about the interval variable so for your interval variable you have there the word interval because uh in in the measurements that you will be uh, uh measuring later for for variables uh you can see that there is an interval and interval variable can be measured of course it can be measured by certain tools okay measuring tools it has numerical value of course this is quantitative variable and it has interval for example 10 meters or 20 meters 20 meters to 30 meters so there there is a certain interval and take note of this interval variable has no true zero okay it has no true zero remember that when we say zero meaning to say it has no value it means none it, it means nothing however in interval variable your zero is not considered true meaning to say instead of having of, of having no value here in interval variable it has a value okay it has meaning so that is why uh, most of the time interval variable has values below zero such as negative values like negative one negative two negative three four and five so take note of that because that's one way of uh, determining the difference between an interval and the ratio variable for for this type of, of variable so i'll give you examples so that you will try to you will really understand what interval variable is so we have here temperature so temperature is considered as an interval variable and it is measured in degree celsius so in our example we have here five five uh measured values for temperature we have 10 degrees celsius five degrees celsius zero degree celsius negative five degrees celsius and negative 10 degrees celsius so if you have noticed there is an interval here five to ten degrees celsius zero to five degrees celsius negative 5 to 0 degrees Celsius and negative 10 to negative 5 degrees Celsius and in here 0 here is uh, means uh, has a value okay it does not follow the original meaning that 0 has no value that is why in interval variable 0 is considered uh, I mean in interval interval variable 0 here it has meaning okay uh, because uh, there are still values 
um, after zero, just like the negative values. So once you encounter variables that has a zero value and at the same time it has negative values, okay, that follows it, it means that it is an interval variable. It uh, meets the, the, the definition that an interval variable has no true zero. Another example here of an interval variable is your freezing points, uh, uh, freezing point of certain substances. So probably we have here examples of the measured values for freezing point, 5.6 degrees Celsius, 2.5 degrees Celsius, 0 degrees Celsius, negative 5.3 degrees Celsius, negative 7.6 degrees Celsius. So you ha if you have noticed here, uh, we have here negative values and uh, we have here 0. 0 here has value and it has meaning uh, because uh, when we say 0 degrees Celsius here, it is uh, the, the freezing point is uh, still can be measured when compared to the negative 5.3 degree Celsius. Okay, so that's interval variable. So take note of that. And the last one is the, the ratio variable. Okay, uh, just like the interval variable, your ratio variable can be measured. It is also it has also a numerical value that's why it is classified under uh, continuous which is a quantitative variable it has a uh, interval so ratio is actually an interval variable but the only difference here is that there is true zero okay so meaning to say the value of zero here is true which means that zero here, that the meaning is it is nothing, it is none. For instance, for instance, uh, height of a person. When you say zero height, that does not exist. Okay, um, so that's true zero. It means nothing, and there is no such thing as zero centimeter height. Okay, so that's a ratio. So we will have here an example ratio variable height. We have here 105 centimeters, 98 centimeters, and 76 centimeters. So, so this, these examples of measured uh, values are uh, considered uh, under ratio variable, under the, the height as your identified uh, variable, because uh, zero, there is no such thing as zero height here, as mentioned earlier. Okay, the same thing with weight. Weight is also a ratio variable because there is no such thing as zero weight. And um, that means that there is, in this variable, zero really means nothing or none. And so it complies with the, our definition about ratio variable that uh, it, the, there is true zero so your values for your weight are the following 50 kilograms 43 35 25 so if you have noticed in our examples we are not providing here zero as part of the values because in ratio variable zero means nothing or none okay so in this video uh let us summarize we talked about other types of variables such as uh, categorical and then continuous categorical variables can still be classified into two we have the nominal and then the ordinal when it is nominal you are only naming or labeling while in the ordinal you are naming or labeling the categories of the variables but it has to observe certain order or rank while in continuous variable we have here two classifications interval and then ratio for interval of course you have their measured values but you have to consider that it has uh, no true zero while for ratio uh, ratio variable are actually have the same uh, characteristics with interval variables but the only difference is that it has the true zero value so that's all for today thank you